hello everyone welcome to this video so in this video we are going to see how we are going to install vCenter server appliance on vSphere 7 so basically it's vCenter server appliance 7.0 so before that uh, let's check out vmwarearena.com so vmwarearena.com we have a lot of vSphere uh, related articles um, starting from many versions we click on vSphere 7 so we have a lot of article related to the vSPS 7 which is upcoming uh, I have also talked about the upgrade so upgrade from 6.7 to 7.0 and what is the difference between 6.7 and 7.0 how to download vSPS 7 and uh, some of the new features of uh, vSPS 7 and also I talked about uh, what's new with vSPS so it gives the overall uh, view about uh, what are the new feature introduced with the vSPS 7 so please do check out VMA arena.com uh, to relate it to the uh, VMware products and also have a lot of deep dive articles about NSX TVs and all these things so let's jump into the installation series so search for download vSphere 7 uh, so first we are uh, I will show how to download uh, vCenter server appliance 7.0 installation ISO so you can click on vCenter 7.0 go to download so the download file size will be like 6.42 GB which is an ISO file so click on download now it will redirect you to the my VMware website where you can uh, log in using your uh, registered VMware email address and password uh, so here I have already downloaded the vCenter server appliance which is the file name is uh, vcscr 7.0 so if you have some of the iso mounting tool installed just right click and mount it so it will locally mount into your uh, windows machine where you have downloaded the vcsa just browse, browse through the vcsa ui installer folder double click so i am going to install it from windows so open the windows 32 folder and look for the file called installer so basically once we double click the installer it will just launch the vcsa installer wizard so this is this installation uh, uh, is is four in one installer like four in one uh, purposes so first one is install so if you want to install a new vcenter server we can use upgrade whether you want to upgrade from one existing uh, vcenter server appliance we can use the upgrade option migrate so with the vsp7 uh, it's only recommended to have a vcenter appliance if you have an existing windows based server we can use a migrate option or if your vcenter is broken if you want to restore the vcenter server from on backup we can use the restore option so in this series we are going to install a new vcenter click on install so with the vSphere 7.0 the only supported model is uh, embedded vcenter so external platform services controller has been uh, depreciated in this so we have to install an uh, embedded uh, platform uh, controller with an uh, vCenter server this is a single appliance so installation will be a two step so let's start on the stage one stage one is a deploying vCenter server accept the license agreement so if you are deploying the first vCenter then you can specify the ESXA host I, I already have my another vCenter server so I am just deploying it this vCenter on uh, existing one so I am entering my vCenter server um, host name uh, specify the SSO password and root so if it is a first then as i said like you can uh, deploy the vcenter on the directly on the esxa host and uh, specify the root and uh, root password of esxa to deploy the vcenter click next accept the certificate warning so uh, since i'm deploying it in the vcenter it's asking me the data center location and where to deploy this particular uh, vcenter virtual appliance virtual machine so I selected my data center, select the cluster or ESXA host. I have a cluster, six node ESXA host cluster. So I'm deploying it on my vSAN cluster. So enter the VM name. So this will be the inventory. Uh, VM name will be appear in the vCenter or uh, ESXA inventory. Just specify the VM name for this particular uh, appliance. So I'm just specifying MD demo VC and set the password. This will be the password for your uh, vcenter appliance os password like photon os root password 
click on next so select the deployment size of vCenter server so there are multiple deployment sizes like tiny small medium large so each one have uh, the maximum number of uh, hosts it can uh, manage so depend upon your infrastructure size you can pick up the deployment size so this is my lab environment i'm just going at with the tiny and select the data store where you want to deploy this particular uh, vCenter server appliance select the vm network so where you this particular vcenter server appliance can connect to specify the fqd and name for the vcenter server appliance which includes your domain name fqd and name uh, specify the ip address enter the subnet mask or prefix length for the vcenter server specify the default gateway And DNS server so once all the settings are uh, specified click on next so review all the settings which we have uh, specified in the earlier step click on finish so it will start deploying the vCenter server appliance virtual machine uh, on the on the selected ESXi or uh, vCenter server so first step is to deploy the uh, appliance using an OVA file so when you go to a uh, the vCenter server or ESXi host where we selected to deploy this one so we can see and uh, deploy uh, a virtual machine deployment task is going on so let's take a look at there so this is a vCenter server I have selected so if you go to task and events we can see deploy OVF template task is going on for the virtual machine so basically this stage one will deploy the OVF template and install the required RPMs and uh, on the stage two we will be configuring uh, uh, some of the SSO settings and it configures the vCenter server plans. So um, to speed up this video we are just passing in between and coming back to avoid you know like a lengthy videos. So it is deploying the vCenter server and it will power on the vCenter server appliance virtual machine and it will start installing the RPMs which are necessary to run the vCenter server. So it's, it's, it's just starting up uh, the RPM installations. It started installing the necessary RPMs. So if we can open uh, that particular VM and console, we can see that VM is already deployed and it can be reachable in the network. So it started deploying the, installing the RPMs, necessary RPMs. Just open up the console to see the um, vCenter server appliance console. Double click, open the web console. So here is a console of my vCenter server appliance uh, 7.0 is already deployed and uh, it's, it, it's showing the URL but it will not be accessible by the time. So once the stage 2 is completed, so we can start accessing the vCenter server. Okay, the stage 1 uh, deploy vCenter server task is completed. So it's just prompting us to continue with the stage 2. So stage two, as we discussed, the stage 2 is an... Um, uh, configuration and deployment process so we'll we'll provide the configuration for uh, vcenter server so it will start configuring the vcenter server um, in the stage 2 of uh, vcenter server installation so this is stage 2 uh, introduction so basically uh, this is two step as we understand the stage 2 we are setting up the vcenter server click on next uh, provide the time synchronization settings whether you want to synchronize uh, uh, time with uh, underlying ESXi host or you want to uh, synchronize with an uh, NTP servers. So I am choosing the NTP servers and enable the SSH for the vCenter server appliance OS. Select the SSO configuration. So if it is a new um, SSO domain and uh, so you can use uh, select uh, 
new SSO or if you have an existing uh, if you want to join this particular vCenter server to an existing SSO domain you can you can select the option join an existing domain uh, so this is my new SSO domain just specify your domain name I'm just going out with the default one vSphere.local you can specify anything provide the password for uh, administrator account and confirm the password so this is to join existing domain you can select and provide the domain name and existing vCenter server information to join to the existing SSO domain click on next so uh, next step will be configuring CIP so CIP is a customer uh, experience improvement program so VMware basically uh, collects the information obviously not the secu security information like IP or host name anything to provide better experience to the customer they collect the information so that if any issues or anything is notified so they can uh, fix it click next so review all the uh, settings which we provided and click on finish so it will show you warning about we cannot pause or uh, skip stop the installation um, once we click on okay that's perfectly fine we are going to deploy in a new vcenter click okay so it will start uh, configuring the vcenter server uh, the stage 2 process has started already so as we said uh, we will be skipping uh, pausing the videos in between to come back because it takes uh, a few minutes to uh, start each of the services uh, which is running on the vCenter server appliance and uh, configuration applying the configuration settings which we provided in the earlier steps so I'm going to pass and come back uh, to progress this installation so it is starting the VMware vCenter service service uh, now it's starting the library services content library services so as we discussed there are a lot of exciting features has been released with uh, vSphere 7 there are a lot of improvements has been brought into content library services there are new features especially to the vCenter servers like um, update planner so uh, we can uh, <clears throat> update the vCenter servers uh, easily check your product compatibility all these things okay so we have successfully set up this vCenter uh, so the installation both stage 1 and stage 2 is completed successfully and this is a URL to access we don't need to specify any uh, port uh, for uh, vCenter 7.0 just click on that link it will automatically open the vCenter server link in the uh, web browser your default web browser let's click on advanced and ignore the certificate warning so in the vCenter we can only see the HTML5 client in vSphere 7 we no more have a vSphere web client click on uh, vSphere client and uh, log into your uh, administrator account SSO administrator account like as administrator at vSphere.local local, which we specified in uh, during the installation so first time we have to log in with that then uh, later we can configure an active directory and provide um, active directory user access to your vCenter server click OK that's it uh, so the vCenter server is installed and we are accessing it so we have installed the GA version of uh, 7.0 uh, it's it's just a fresh uh, vCenter server so in the upcoming video series we'll see how to add ASXA host and uh, um, we'll talk about a lot of new features of uh, vSphere 7 um, I request everyone to subscribe to this channel to get the latest updates you can also check out uh, vmwarearena.com uh, to see uh, then what is the new features and a lot of new article about vSphere 7.0 um, uh, please do check out the website and also if you like the video, please uh, like it share it and uh, Please please do subscribe to the channel uh, So that whatever new video I put you get on latest updates. So thank you so much for your time and Bye-bye